Welcome back to my writer's room, everyone. I am Matt Wallace, YouTube's resident angry writer, and thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to come hang out with me here in my angry, lonely, little writerly sanctum. I always appreciate that. I really do. Uh, me not being naked on the vlog today is brought to you, as always, by our t-shirt of the day, which is my Protect the Business Keeping Kayfabe Since 1880 t-shirt. I love this t-shirt. And if you get any of these references, then you are the kind of wrestling fan that I can hang out with. So congratulations. Uh, come over. We'll watch a pay-per-view sometime. Uh, just not a WWE pay-per-view. Um, I got this shirt out of uh, this month's Wrestle Crate, which is always, you can see me unbox over on my wrestling channel, Matt F. And Wallace, if you're into that kind of thing. If not, don't worry about it. I'm sure... Stamp collecting or whatever crap you're into is fun, too. It is January 26, 2018. It is Friday. You made it. You made it to the end of the week. Another short-term battle won in the war against this thing we call life. Congratulations. As you can see, I drew the inception of Hamshackle here, which was just the head before Hamshackle Pig had a body. Uh, and he's surrounded by questions because it's the end of the week, and we always end the week with a question. So, thematically, you can see that all works. So don't... You can accuse me a lot of, of a lot of things. Never confuse... Never, con, never accuse me of thematic inconsistency. So how did everybody's week go? Sincerely. I want to know. Hit the comments. Let me know. How did your week go? Um, I had a pretty good week, all things considered. Uh, I'm gelling really well at the new job. Everybody's feeling me in my writing, which is very rewarding. I'm learning new uh, skills uh, in this job, you know, um, I have a very cool editorial director who's uh, been teaching me a lot of the latest marketing techniques I've kind of been out of the loop on for the last few years. I seem to be picking everything up really quickly, at least they seem very impressed by how quickly I pick things up, so can't complain about that. Um, if you saw yesterday's vlog, I, I revealed the ARC of Taste of Wrath, my seventh and final Saint Dejour book. So it was a big deal to get that this week. Um, very emotional for me. Um, it, was a, it was a good week on the social front, too. I actually caught up with a lot of people this week. I've been the first few weeks of the year. I feel like I'm saying the word weeks a lot. The first few weeks of the year um, have been so slammed with acclimating to this new job and trying to finish the new book and trying to balance all of that with actually seeing my wife for a few minutes every day that... Uh, we haven't been, uh, we hadn't been catching up with with our friends uh, like we like we would like to, and we're trying to do better with that this year. But this week was good. Uh, Wednesday, I had dinner with Margaret Dunlap, one of my favorite television writers. We went out and got sushi and got to share our uh, our triumphs and defeats uh, in the industry. And uh, there's some conversations you can only have with other writers. You know what I mean? So that was very cool. Love Margaret. She's she's intensely talented. Uh, Middleman, uh, Lizzie, Lizzie Bennett uh, Diaries. She's working on, I think, uh, Barbie's Dream House right now and making that really interesting. She's working on a bunch of other stuff that uh, she's not allowed to talk about publicly yet, but Margaret's doing great. It was good to catch up with her. Uh, last night, my wife and I got to have dinner with uh, everyone's favorite Twitter exile at the moment, uh, Lexi Alexander. Lexi took us to this really amazing Argentinian steakhouse as like a belated wedding gift for me and my wife because she's an amazing person in all ways. And we talked about everything from, you know, baking to porn to all our industry woes. Um, she's one of the most interesting people I know and it was really cool to catch up with her. Uh, beginning of this week on Sunday, I got to go check out um, Edward Earl Newton and his wife uh, Jessica who do the How to ADHD channel and uh edward was cool enough to shoot some new headshots for me because he's he's an amazing shooter whether it's filmmaking or web videos or still photography so much talent wrapped up in such a svelte body uh, is edward it's pretty amazing uh one of my oldest friends and it was just cool to cool to catch up with them so it was nice it was just nice to remind myself my wife too just to remind ourselves that there are other people out there in the world that we care about and connect with and share history with and share many commonalities with. And it's important to go see those people and remind yourself that it's not all this insular little world of work in our, uh, in our little offices. So that was probably the best part of the week. Uh, so yeah, hope yours was good too. Uh, we'll try, we'll try, like I always say, we'll try to do it better, faster, stronger next week. But this week was a good precedent and we'll try to, we'll try to keep that going 
after the weekend. So it is Friday, it is the end of the week, and we always end the week with a question here on the vlog, as you know if you follow along uh, regularly. I don't have like a big philosophical existential question this week. Instead, I wanted to address um, a lot of, not smaller questions, I'm not trying to say anybody's question is less important, but just, I got a lot of questions on Twitter for the vlog, and I wanted to kind of, I figured this would be a good episode to sort of uh, answer all of your questions that, you, that you've been asking me on uh, Twitter. So I picked some good ones, and uh, that's how we're going to end the week. We're going to end the week with several questions. You're getting a multi-question bonus only here on the Angry Writer vlog, on my Writer's Room vlog, here on the Angry Writer uh, YouTube channel. Who else does that for you? Not the fucking Paul Brothers, I'll tell you that right now. They're just out there warping young minds. I'm here dropping knowledge. That's what I do. So I've written all the questions down on little pink post-it notes because I'm shooting this on my phone and I'm in a corner of my office where the lighting is the least crappy so I couldn't bring my laptop over here because my laptop has no battery. I would have to disconnect it and then it has a battery but it doesn't hold a charge anymore. Um, this is way more backstory than needed on this. But anyway, I've written all the questions down on these little post-its and we're gonna just, we're gonna bang some of them out. So this one comes from Josh Smith. Uh, by the way, have you ever tried to write a J and then you realize too late you started the loop way too high and it sort of comes out looking like a seagull? So you feel like you messed up, but then you realize it's kind of funny that your J looks like a seagull and it makes you happy. So it's a happy accident, as Bob Ross would say. You ever notice that? Is that, is that a universal thing or does that only happen to me? Anyway, Josh Smith ask, asks, the what else do you have question to a not yet debut author from an agent. How do you handle that? Uh, I'll, I'll repeat that because it's a little awkwardly phrased. The what else do you have question to a not yet debut author from an agent. How do you handle that? So if you're unfamiliar with what Josh is talking about, whether you are, uh, he's, I, he's specifically talking about writing novels in this instance, but this is cross applicable to writing screenplays or really any, uh, any kind of creative work. Whether you're talking to an agent or whether you're talking to a producer, or whether you're talking to an editor, you will pitch them something, you will pitch them the story. In this case, Josh is referring to something that as someone who has not yet debuted, you probably only have one thing. You've written a book and you're pitching the book that you've worked very hard on to an agent and they don't want to take whatever the book you've written is, but they like the writing or you enough to ask you, what else have you got? Meaning, what other stories, what other books, what other, what other, what other ideas do you have? Um, the short answer is, uh, Josh is asking how do you handle that, the short answer is, come up with something else immediately on the spot. That's the short answer to that question. <coughs> um, Josh is specifying not yet debut authors because it's much harder for them. As I said, when you're at that stage, you usually just have one thing that you have worked very hard to turn into a manuscript, a finished manuscript. You've poured all of yourself into that and you might not have anything else ready to show them. Thing is, that's okay. Um, if an agent is asking you that question, if they're asking you, what else have you got? They're interested in you, and it's okay if you don't have something finished and ready to go on the spot, um, but you do want to have an answer to that question to keep their interest. You don't want to say, nothing, this is probably the only thing I'm ever going to write here, because in that case, the agent is going to say, well, good luck with that, and then they're going to forget about you immediately five seconds later. Um, talk to them about other ideas you have. Have other ideas ready in your head to to pitch. Um, just do the best you can, but you need to have an answer to that question because you just want to keep their interest going. And even if it's not something that's ready, if you at least tell them, these are other things I want to work on, um, they'll be interested enough to keep you in mind and want to see those things nine times out of 10. You know, Whatever idea you pitch them, as long as you pitch them something confidently, they will tell you, well, cool, when you have something to show, uh, come back and show me and I'll take a look at it. You know, That's really the answer you're trying to get to that question and the only way to get that answer is to is to give them another idea so um don't be caught off guard and that's it that's a good question josh it's a good question you asked there and it's a good thing for not yet debut or aspiring novelist to know is don't be caught off guard by that question have something to say and realize that all you're trying to do in, in that moment if you don't have anything else ready to show them is just keep that relationship going and keep their interest in you going 
And if they're already interested enough to ask you that question, as long as you confidently pitch them an idea, the odds are very good they will be willing to take a look at it if and when you have something else to show them. And even if you get to a point where you have something to show them that has nothing to do with the idea you pitch them, that, that doorway will probably still be open to you. All right, so that's Josh's question. Thank you, Josh. Uh, we've got Autumn Williamson asks, how did you start writing? I know you said you became a writer because it was something you knew you could do, but what brought you to that point? Uh, very good question, Autumn. And, uh, you know, we all, have, we all have to have an origin story, I suppose. Um, when I say uh, it was something I knew I could do, it really was more about it was the only marketable skill I had besides, like, physical violence. And, uh, and I had checked that off uh, my life list at that point. I, uh, I had been a professional wrestler for many years. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I taught unarmed combat. I taught knife defense and I taught other stuff. And I, and I got out of doing all that. I retired as a professional wrestler. And I, uh, I, was, I was living in Tennessee with my mother and kind of reassessing my life and figuring out what am I going to do next. And when you arrive at a point in life where you're reassessing everything, where the thing that was your career or was your full-time pursuit is no longer an option for you um, and you're starting from square one, you really have two choices in that instance. You pick a thing you know how to do and you make that your new thing or you start completely from scratch and choose a new skill or a new path and you start learning that new skill or going down that new path from, from square one. Those are really your only two options. Go with what you know or pick a new thing and learn and learn it. Um, I'm not very good at learning. So I went with uh, option A. I went with a thing that I knew. And the only, and the only honestly, the only other thing that I was ever as interested in as uh, professional wrestling was writing. Um, I've always just been a storyteller. Professional wrestling is just another form of storytelling. Um, so writing was the net was the honestly the next logical step and I know most people wouldn't connect those things but that's it's the truth I've written essays about that you can go look them up but really the closest thing to being a professional wrestler if you're not going to be a professional wrestler is to be a storyteller in another medium like writing whether you're writing novels or writing tv or, or, or whatever you know I wanted I wanted to continue being a storyteller in the only way I could think to do that so that was becoming a writer so that's what I focused on because um, I was, I was, a, I was a fairly good writer, uh, in my mid twenties. I think I'm much better now. And I mean, it's, you know, 10 years, more than 10 years later, I absolutely should be. Um, if you're not a better writer at 35 than you were at 25, you're doing something really wrong. But, um, that's what it really came down to was I, uh, I retired from being one type of storyteller and I wanted to continue being a storyteller in another way. And I didn't just want to go get a Mick job and, you know, toil away in obscurity forever. So, writing. That's, that was really as simple as that. Michelle E. Reed asks, or rather requests, some inspiration slash advice for those still trying to break in. Defeat defeatism? Um, it's funny, Michelle. I was just going to ask you for some inspiration and advice for, uh, for those of us who've already broken in but are trying to take it to the next level. Um, no, but sincerely, that's never a thing that ends. Uh, you should know that going in. I know that's not very inspirational to say that, but, um, no, here's the thing. Uh, the important thing to know right now, if you're someone who's, who's trying to break into writing, whatever, whatever medium or industry you're trying to break into, you need to realize that everyone that you idolize, or don't even idolize, but see as a professional who's broken in and who's made it, all of them were exactly where you were right now at one point. And what I mean, and I don't, and I don't just mean in terms of their career, I mean the mental state you're in right now, because I know the mental state you're in right now, because again, I was there. You were on the outside and a part of you cannot realistically imagine a scenario where you were on the inside of that. You really can't. You, you start to think as you collect rejection and you see the hurdles that are in this business, you legitimately start to think, um, I am not someone who uh, belongs on the, on the other side of this wall. There is no place for me over there. This is something that happens to other people and not to me. That's, that's what you start to think to yourself. Um, even if it's something subconscious, even if it's something you don't acknowledge constant, consciously, most of us, 99.9% .9 of us, 
everyone but the extremely lucky who were able to break in relatively fast. Um, and I say extremely lucky and not extremely talented because in that, in that instance of breaking in really fast, I will absolutely uh, err on the side of luck than, than skill. It's much better. It's, it's much, the people who do that tend to be way more lucky than they are talented. Helps to be talented, and it's, it's good when you see someone who's blindingly talented break in very quickly. But it just doesn't really happen. 99.9% per, .9 of us get to that place where we cannot imagine ourselves on the other side of that wall breaking into the industry. And the, the important thing to remember is everyone who has defeated that wall and broken into the industry had those exact same thoughts. At one point, they thought to themselves, this is not a thing that can happen for me. And I thought that for years. I thought, okay, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. And as it, as it went on and I got better, I'm like, actually, I'm very good at this. But I am just not made for whatever this industry requires. I just don't have it. Whether it's the personality or the promotional skills or I don't, have, I don't write the types of stories they're looking for. Whatever excuse you tell yourself, you, start, you, make up, you make up a reason why you don't belong. And that's all crap. It, it really is. And it's stunning how, how easily and how quickly you'll let that go once you make that first big stride. Once you get the agent, once the agent sells your first book, once you're having uh, conversations with an editor in New York about your book. Um, it's, it's, it's crazy how quickly you accept that reality and move on from this completely disparate place you were right before all that stuff happened. It's all about normalization. Right now, what's normal for you, what you've normalized, what you've accepted as your reality is being an unpublished, being an unpublished writer. It's going to be just as easy, I promise you, to accept the reality of being a published writer um, over that wall inside the industry and then your reality will become, well, I'm, I'm in the industry, but I'm nowhere near as successful or as recognized as I want to be. You'll develop a whole new set of problems. <laughs> so you have that to look forward to. Um, but yeah, that's, that honestly is, what, is what, I would, what I would offer you right now. We have all been there. And we all found some way to overcome. You will too, as long as... The, 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 only, thing, the only thing it requires, honestly, and you'll, and you'll hear this a lot... You hear this about persistence, but all it requires is that you don't stop and you don't give up. That's all it is. If you keep writing and keep submitting and keep badgering people, eventually you will break through that wall. And I'm not promising you you'll have wild success, but you will break through that wall of, uh, of, getting, of getting inside the industry. Once, what you do there, once you're inside there, that's a whole other, uh, that's a whole other can of uh, worms with teeth. But... To begin with, I can promise you, if you just don't quit, you'll make the headway. You'll make the strides. You will get over the wall. I, I promise you that because we all did. And none of us know more than you. We really don't. I swear to God, you would not believe how stupid some of the most successful writers I know are. It's, it's unbelievable. But, um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm still getting over the, the, uh, the crud that's been spreading throughout the land here. But no, I promise you, uh, we don't know more than, more than you do. And we didn't know more than you do right now before we broke in. We just didn't quit. That's, that's the one commonality we all share. We kept writing, we kept submitting, we kept trying, and eventually we broke through. And that's all you need to do, honestly. It may take you longer than some. I promise you it'll be shorter than some others. It's a huge spectrum. You just gotta keep, uh, just gotta keep pushing on it. That's all. So I hope you found that inspirational, and uh, I hope that was, I hope there was advice somewhere in there. <laughs> That's gonna be it for this week, folks. Thank you for your questions. Uh, I did the best I could with them. I hope I offered you something worthy. Um, go out there, have the best weekend you possibly can. You deserve it just for making it to the end of this week. I will be back next week with five fresh more, <laughs> fresh more, with five fresh new vlogs uh, next week. In the meantime, I am Matt Wallace, and I will see you all on Monday.